I'm Sandra. Welcome to Teaching Strategies Read Aloud. Today I'm going to be reading The Book Tree, two of my favorite things, books and trees. The author of this book is Paul Sajak, and the illustrator is Rasheen Kyrie. Let's see what's going on in this story. Wow. Nestled in the branches of a tree, Arlo opened his book and breathed it in. Beginnings were always the best part. They smelled as if anything were possible. I love the start of stories. Oh, bonk. It looks like the book fell on someone's head. I'm sorry, Mayor. I got lost in my book and it just slipped. Preposterous. Books are dangerous. Preposterous, what a big word. Let's find out what it means. I don't trust them. They act like seeds which grow into ideas and ideas turn into questions. I will tell you what you need to know. Well, that's ridiculous. Preposterous, I think that maybe means ridiculous. I think what he's saying is a little ridiculous. First, the mayor gathered every book in the library and then every book in the whole town. Oh no. And then he tore him up until all that was left was one single page that floated away in the passing breeze. Look at Arlo chasing after it. Oh my goodness. I'm sure you never rip up books. I certainly don't. Arlo chased the pages as, as it blew across the town. It reminded him of a dandelion seed drifting on a wish. The dandelion seeds. When it landed in the muddy earth, it got swallowed up letter by letter until it was all gone. Oh, this is making me really sad right now. Look at the town. At school, the teachers had nothing to read. So story time became nap time. Without cookbooks, restaurants served only dry cereal. Ugh. No one went to the theater because the actors had nothing to tell about. They didn't know what to read or act out. And in Arlo's very favorite, most loved places of all, what do we think that says? Library. All of the shelves were empty. Oh my goodness, look at Arlo. I think I would be feeling sad and crying as well. Even his kitty cat is crying. Arlo sat where the last page was buried. He missed the sound of that crack crack of a new book spine. This is the spine of a book. When it's a new book, sometimes it makes a special noise when you open it. Sadly, Arlo scratched two words into the dirt. I'm gonna turn it over so you can see what it says. The end. Oh. Sadly, those were the very, very worst part of any book, the end see if something good happens because I'm getting really sad. Oh, this page is looking kind of happy. Let's find out what happens. But as he stared at the words, they grew into an idea. Arlo sat with a pencil and a piece of paper and he let the ideas flow. Look at all of his ideas. There's a dancing strawberry lady, and there's a beautiful musical instrument, and a frog, so many ideas. I wonder why the frog got some ice cream. That's pretty awesome. He read his new stories out loud to anyone who passed by. Everyone stopped and listened. Then he heard something, a sound that he thought he would never hear again. Crick, crack, crick, crack. Do you remember what that was? When Arlo looked for the source of the sound, where it was coming from, and he saw 
a sprout springing from where the page had been buried. Hmm, sprouts come from things that are planted. It began to open its leaves. It reached for Arlo's words, begging for more. The book wanted more and more words. With every story Arlo wrote and read aloud, the sprout grew bigger. Arlo wrote a story about a giant and the tree grew tall, stretching for the clouds. He wrote about fire be breathing beasts and all the branches became strong as the dragon's claws. And he wrote about a magical swan made of paper and blooms of tissue paper blossomed into books. Look at that. I think I'm understanding why this is called the book tree. This tree is growing with all of these books. When the books were ripe, Arlo climbed into the branches of the book tree and breathed in deeply, enjoying the fruits of his harvest. While Arlo read, a friend stopped under the tree. Hey, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. You could try reading, Arlo said. Is that a book? Yup. Here, I love this story, Arlo said, giving her a hand up into the tree. And the, ch the two shared the shady spot. Look at that. He's helping his friend up so that she can enjoy a book as well. Soon, flocks of readers roosted on the limbs. That's so funny. Roosting is usually done by birds, but I guess they're acting like birds up in the trees. People grew hungry for reading again. Some wrote their own stories and became book gardeners themselves. Fiery maples bloomed with picture books. Willows wept with poetry. So many different kind of stories. And the town blossomed. The mayor, lost in his mayoral work, that's work that mayors do, was oblivious. Means he didn't know what was going on. That is until a ripe book fell bonk right on his head again. The mayor kicked and stomped. Who planted these trees? You did, sir, Arlo said when you tore up the books. It planted an idea. Impossible. This is the second time my head is hurting because of a book. The trees have to be cut down. No, but we've become a town of books and stories. We can't cut them down. Look at all the people saying, no, we can't do that again. That was a bad idea. The mayor walked the streets of the town. He gorged himself on one of the wonderful restaurants. He caught a show at the park and lost himself in a story about a boy fishing for a whale in a puddle. Wow, I think the mayor is having fun with all of the wonderful things that have happened. Maybe ideas are not bad. Books did all of this? The mayor asked. No, Arlo said and he handed the mayor a freshly picked story. The book was just the seed. What a wonderful story. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that you read lots and lots of books or you sit with someone that reads them to you because every book has lots of great ideas in it. Thanks so much.